In today's video, I'm going to show you an easy trick for turning one light into many lights for better macro photography. So using lighting in macro photography is so important, particularly if you're out shooting in areas where you just don't have a lot of sunlight. Maybe you're under a load of trees or in some shrubs and whatever you've found to take photos of is just too dark. Now I love using lighting in all of my macro photography because it allows me to be a lot more creative. I can put that light exactly where I want to get effects that I just could not get if I was relying on the sunlight alone. And you can take that even further by using multiple different lights, one coming in from the top, one adding a bit of edge light, and then maybe a third one giving some more emphasis on that background. But of course, if you're hiking out in the field, you're going through the forests, you don't want to be carrying three or four of these things around, but there's a handy way of making sure that you can get exactly the same result without having to overload your backpack. So let's take a look at the scene that I've set up. So I've set up this really, really simple scene here. I've got my 5D4 on my tripod, my 100mm macro lens, and if you can just about see, on this little bit of wire that I've set up here, I've got a single coffee bean. Now it might not exactly be the most exciting of scenes, but it's nice and simple and it will illustrate well what I'm gonna tell you about lighting. And as you can see for the background, what I have done is use one of my fake wood photography backdrops, which I'm hoping is just gonna give a little bit of interest behind the coffee bean. Okay, so let's start with this scene. It's dead simple, really. We've got this uh, coffee bean very, very close to the camera so that we're filling the frame with the bean. I actually quite like the look of roasted coffee beans because we've got all that kind of burnt, charred texture on them, so they can make for quite interesting subjects. But as I say, this is purely an example just to show you the lighting. Now, to maximize the detail on the coffee bean itself, I'm gonna shoot to F10, my ISO of the lowest point, that's ISO 100, and I'm gonna have my shutter speed about 160th of a second. Now, with no lighting, if I just take a quick shot, we will have a completely black frame, which is exactly what we want. That means that I know that when I turn this light on and I start firing it at the coffee bean, it's only the light from the flash that we're going to see. This isn't going to be affected by the video lights I've got on or by any of the other overhead lights in this room. That means I've got complete control over the look of this image. Okay, so let's take our first shot. And I think for this, what I'd want to do is make sure the light is coming in from the right-hand side. It's almost the face of the coffee bean as it were and it would be the main light the key light that is really kind of giving um, some identifying light onto our coffee bean so what I'm going to do is just hand hold this light I'm triggering it remotely from here this is the Godox AD200 this is the the light that I tend to use for most of my macro stuff I'm just going to take my shot and straight away we can see exactly how much light we've got coming in. It's really emphasizing this right hand side of the coffee bean. And this side though, is fallen completely into shadow. So it is a little bit of like a moody shot, but it doesn't really show the coffee bean it's in its entirety. This side completely fades to black into the background, which is not ideal. Now there's two ways that I can do this and I'm gonna show both. First of all, the simplest method, this, just a sketch pad of blank white paper. My first attempt is just gonna to be to bounce that light. I'm gonna hold this white paper up close to the coffee bean and as I fire that light in from one side, this is literally going to bounce it back up and help fill in those shadows on the other side. It is bouncing light. You may have heard of people using reflectors, anything like that, that is what they're doing, literally reflecting that light back in, essentially doubling your lights by bouncing the same light source back onto your subject. So I'm just gonna prop this up because it is a notebook quite close to the coffee bean. Exactly the same thing, take my light, fire it from this side. So now if we look at the difference, this was our shot without that bounce light, just the one light coming in here. And now we've brought that other light in. If we zoom in a little bit more, you can see now that it's carved out this side of the coffee bean much more. Let's look at our previous one, falls completely to blackness. This one, we've got that light in there. We can see where the coffee bean ends now and where our background actually begins. 
but it's quite a subtle light. It is just, after all, a bit of a reflection of that light rather than it being its own light source. So what I wanna do is actually take another shot using the flash in different angles. And then what we're gonna do is piece those individual shots together in post. The result is gonna be a shot that looks like we've taken it with multiple different speed lights at multiple angles, but actually we've just used the one and some Photoshop cunning. So our process is exactly the same though. We start off, I'm gonna look close up at the coffee bean, make sure that our focus is bang on, which it is. Our settings haven't changed, still F10, still 160th of a second. Okay, so let's start off. And again, as before, we're gonna take one shot from this side, and then I'm gonna take another one from this side. And I'm gonna take one directly from the top, just to give that little kick of light overhead. So now if we go and look at those three images, let's go back to our blank square, something like this. Our first light does most of the heavy lifting in lighting up the coffee bean. We've got lovely detail on its face, as it were. Our next one is this kicker light, just adding that accent, filling in those details like we try to do with the reflector. And then the final one is just that extra little kick on top. But the last thing I'm gonna do is take a shot with our background, because right now, all of the shots we've got is just a coffee bean against complete blackness, and that isn't what we want. So what I'm gonna do is just remove our coffee bean from the shot altogether. And because we focus so close to the lens, this uh, wood effect backdrop is just completely blurred out to nothing at all. Um, you can't really see it. So actually what I'm gonna do is just change my focus and focus on that wood, but not completely. I don't want it pin sharp. I still want that out of focus effect um, as if if you were focusing on something closer than the background. So what I'm gonna do is get pin sharp focus on this now and then just blur it again, just so that you can tell that there is that bit of a wood grain in the background, but that it's not so sharp that it kind of pulls focus literally from the coffee bean. But of course we need to light it up just like our other shot. So I'm just gonna hold this up, take my shot and there we go, done. So now we've got all of those images. I can take those over into Photoshop and put them all together. Okay, so here we've got the shots that we've just taken in Lightroom. And let's just have a look at this one. This was the first one that we did with just that one light hitting it. It's a nice shot. We've got some lovely crisp detail from that speed light coming in on the right here. But as you can see, it really does just fall into almost total blackness this side. Um, so that is why we then brought in that reflector and it definitely helped kick back some of that light. You could emphasize that even more by using literally a mirror, which would obviously reflect more light than just white paper. You could even use some reflective gold card and it would warm that light up, reflect it back in, which could look nice on something like a coffee bean. But what I did is actually just use multiple lights. And so we've got these shots here with the different light sources. And for me, that is the way I prefer to go with my macro photography. It's also the way that I like to work if I'm doing product photography. I use multiple light sources, putting that light exactly where I want it to be. So now we've got these shots here. It's going to be fairly straightforward in what we want to do. I am just going to uh, check for white balance on these ones. They look okay, actually. The, the tones on the coffee bean itself look pretty good. Yep, I don't mind that. This one actually on this edge isn't completely in focus. Um, so maybe what I could have done is focus stacked this shot and then um, brought that in. Um, so it would not only be lit, but it would also be sharper. I, I haven't bothered doing that. I quite like in this one that we've got that bit of depth of field, that it's sort of the middle and, and the further side of the coffee bean, which is in focus. But just something that you can bear in mind, if you just want to brush in um, a brighter layer, you could also um, have done the focus on that. Um, and then we've got the top layer as well, just kissing that top little edge, bringing in that extra bit of light. Um, and then we've got our background layer. And I do on the background layer, just want to warm it up. It looks a little bit cool. Add a little bit of um, sort of magenta uh, into there, maybe bring those shadows down, slightly up that contrast, just make it look a little bit more like a nice grungy wood background. And just by doing those couple of changes, oops, uh, I think we have done that, it looks nice. So now I'm gonna select all four of these images, right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, so here we are over in Photoshop, everything is stacked up and it's already put that wooden background as 
our background. It's good. This is our starting point. We're going to build everything up over the top. Um, so the first one that I want to put in is this one here. So I'm just going to reorder this, put it down here. But the way I'm going to start is by actually piecing together the coffee bean. So I'm going to turn off the background layer, turn on that main coffee bean. And then now let's turn on the kicker light coming in from the top, just this little nice rim light. So we're gonna change that blending mode to lighten. And as I do, you can see that what's happening is that Photoshop is allowing only the lighter parts of that image to display over the top of the lower layer. And that, what that means is that it's allowing that flash to come in over the top. Without it, it's dark, we've just got that one light. Suddenly, here's this extra burst of light coming in. So it's a really nice way of blending your lights together by using these blending modes. But what you can see is that it isn't quite lined up. Maybe I move the camera slightly when I move the lights around. So what I do need to do is just make sure the layer is selected, press uh, V so I can move things around and just drag that around so you can see exactly, you know, that it's not bringing in that whole layer, it's just bringing in the light. Um, and I may just need to slightly nudge it into position by using the arrow keys that will just move it one pixel at a time until it's lined up nicely. You can zoom in to that edge. I think that's looking nicely lined up. Turn that off and on. You can just see all that's adding in is that extra light coming in from the top. It's so simple. So now we've got a two light setup having used just one light. So let's turn on the third one. Goes like this and same again. We're gonna move the blending mode from normal to lighten. Straight away we can see, but suddenly now that light is visible. But again, we're gonna to have to just move that layer maybe a little bit and we turn that off and on. You can see it's adding in that light. We turn both of these and we've gone from this one light source coming in from just this side, leaving everything else in shadow, suddenly We've got this lovely, nice three light setup and we can edit these individually. You know, this face layer is a little bit dark so we can just add in a levels adjustment, slightly increase that, maybe bring down these bits of shadows here. So just for ease now, I'm just gonna blend these together. Control E, Control E, uh, Control E, Control E. So now we've just got one layer, which is the coffee bean. So we've got our coffee bean all put together now. It looked really nice, but of course we've got our background beneath it. Um, if we use our blending modes, let's just put it on lighten. You can see it basically becomes like a ghost because it's only showing through the parts of the image that are lighter than the layer below it. And actually the layer below has quite a lot of light parts to it. And that's why we're getting this weird effect. So what we're gonna have to do is actually just cut out the coffee bean and that's pretty easy to do because we've mostly got a black background so we can just use this uh, the magic wand tool tolerance of 14 is fine we click it selects most of the image um, let's just refine that with the lasso tool um, let's add to the selection by adding in around here because it hasn't selected the um, thing that we did and then let's just switch that to um, remove from selection and we can literally just roughly draw around here like this follow it up to the top like that and now our coffee bean is selected but if we zoom right in we can see that it's sort of selecting a lot of the black background as well so what i'm going to do is go to select modify and then contract i'm going to contract our selection by i think five pixels oh that's the wrong way that's expand <laughs> let's do it the other way no of course i know what i've done i'm uh, I'm actually selecting the background, not the coffee bean. So that's why I did that. Okay, now we go to select, we go to modify and then contract five pixels. And now you can see it's just brought it in here. And now I'm gonna go to select again, modify and then feather by say three pixels, just to kind of blur the edge so we haven't got a harsh cutout. Now if we zoom out and we just press the, um, uh, the mask tool, it should basically, yep, cut out our coffee bean as though we had done it like that from uh, from the start. It looks really good, look at that. Nice, neat, feathered edge. None of our black background looks great. But because that I intentionally blurred that background, it wasn't in sharp focus, it actually looks like we've got natural depth of field here, which is exactly what we wanted. So yeah, it looks pretty good. And we've still got a little bit of that, um, uh, that pin um, in the bottom, so all we need to do is just get a brush, make sure that black is selected, and I can just 
paint that away. So now we go back, there we go. Beautiful, um, lovely cut out on this background. We can just go in with our patch tool and just get rid of whatever this little bit of detritus was. Oops, no, select the wrong thing. Deselect, zoom back out. There we go. Lovely looking coffee bean, lovely lighting coming in from three sides and that background light. It's looking really good. So I'm just going to um, merge that down so we've got a base layer. I'm just going to duplicate that as well. And let's go into filter and camera raw filter. These are exactly the same tools that you would find in Lightroom. So it's a really nice way of just tweaking those things. Um, let's go into color mixer first and then luminance. I'm just going to increase those yellows, increase those oranges a little bit. In the hue, I'm going to bring those yellows down just to make them much more of a rich tone really goes with that coffee nicely. Um, I'm not going to touch the oranges because they'll just go pink. It's going to look weird. So I'm going to leave those where they are. And I think that's looking pretty nice. What about bringing those shadows down just a touch? If you bring them up, you see just too much of everything. So I still want that, that mood that you get by using shadows, even though we've put light all over the place in order to get rid of shadows. So it's just about balancing it out. But I think this is looking really, really good. Um, but one thing I am going to do is because I had that main light coming in from the top right on the um, on the coffee bean, I made sure to do the same thing with our background. You can see that in the top right of the frame, the light is coming in stronger than it is on the bottom left. I just want to emphasize that with a radial gradient. I'm just going to bring in a big one like this. I'm going to turn it around, move it right out here and then bring it back in like this. So you can see it's very, very feathered off. But what I wanna do is just sort of emphasize that light. Maybe move it in a bit more like this. Warm it up with a bit more tint. This might be a bit too much. Maybe bring it down a little bit like that. Something like this. You can see, and we can move that beam of light around as it were. So it's really just emphasizing the idea that there is one light coming in and hitting both the background and that coffee bean. And I just think that looks really nice. Look at our before and after of what, a minute, two minutes maybe of of um, camera raw editing. And we've got this really, really nice shot. Um, so that actually does, I think, bring me to an end. This is everything I'd want to do on this shot, except maybe I'd do a crop and, and whatever. But this is just an example. You know, this is not the most <laughs> exciting of shots, as I said in the beginning. But what I wanted to show is how I would use just one light, but layering up different exposures to create a shot that makes it look like you've actually had multiple lights positioned. This isn't something that you can only do in studio. You can do this on location in exactly the same way. You make sure that your camera is locked down on your tripod, you move that light around, and you blend the images in post exactly in the same way you've seen me do here. But that does bring me to an end of this video. Um, I really hope this has been useful. I hope it's shown you some techniques that maybe you hadn't considered using in your own macro photography. Maybe it's something that you can put to use. And if you do, make sure to hit me up on Instagram, tag me in your images and show me what you've been creating. I really do love seeing when people are putting these tips into action. If you have enjoyed this video, do please hit that like button. Do consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.